the birthday question. How many students are required to be inside a classroom so that the chance of two students sharing the same birthday, month and day, is roughly 50% or one half? This is what we typically refer to as a coincidence. So what is the possibility of the coincidence happening so that the chance of two students sharing the same birthday, month and day, is roughly 50% or one half. In order to answer this, we need some background. We need to discuss some terms and rules which deal with the topic of probability. Making predictions. Likelihood, the probable chances of an occurrence of a particular event. We can discuss how likely it is for an event to happen. Examples, chance of rain or snow today, chance of winning the New York State Lottery, chance of rolling a sum of seven when rolling two dice, chance of picking an ace twice from a normal deck of cards, one case, case A, if we were to replace the first card drawn back into the deck before the second draw, or case B, not replacing the first card drawn back into the deck before the second card is drawn. The chance of rolling at least one pair of twos when rolling five dice simultaneously. We actually have two ways of discussing likelihood. One is called theoretical probability and the other relative frequency. We will only deal with probability, what should happen in theory. But we need some more definitions, background, and understanding before we can intelligently discuss the topic of probability. Let's return for a moment to relative frequency. If you take a coin and flip it 25 times, how many times do you expect to flip the outcome heads? Well, you would expect half the time to get heads and half the time to get tails. But in reality, that may not be what will happen. You might only get 11 heads and 14 tails. So relative frequency deals with what happens in real life, whereas theoretical probability deals with what we expect to happen. We will stick to theoretical probability. Some probability terms. Experiment. A situation involving chance or probability that leads to results called outcomes. Outcome. A possible result of a probability experiment is called an outcome. Event. One or more outcomes of a particular experiment. Sample space. The list of all the possible outcomes of an experiment. Let's take a look at an experiment one. Spinning this spinner, which has four equally likely size sectors, being yellow, blue, green, and red. The outcomes of this experiment, the possible outcomes of this experiment, or sample space, are yellow, blue, green, and red, or written with letters, Y, B, G, and R. The sample space can also be written as yellow, blue, green, and red in braces, or using letters with braces as shown here. An example of an event would be getting the outcome yellow. Here is a second experiment. A single six-sided die is rolled. The outcomes are one, two, three, four, five, or six. The sample space is one, two, three, four, five, six, as shown here. And an event could be getting an even number. A third experiment, flipping two coins. The outcomes are shown here. We could have heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, or tails, tails. The sample space could be written as heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, tails, tails, using the letters. And an event could be getting the same outcome on both coins. 
The probability of an event E occurring, or written in notation form, P in parentheses E, is a comparison of the number of favorable outcomes in E over the total number of possible outcomes. The total number of possible outcomes is equal to the size of the sample space. This is what we expect to happen in theory rather than what might happen in reality. We don't actually spin the spinner, roll the die, or flip the coins to see what happens. We just list and examine the possibilities and calculate the probability. The range over which the probability of an event may vary is from 0 to 1, using fractions or decimals, or from 0 to 100 when the value is written as a percent. Here is a simple chart to show the various comparisons of what can happen in a probability experiment. Impossible to happen would be 0% probability. If we move up a little bit, one chance in six, like rolling a four on a die, there's one chance in six, or a one-sixth probability, or written as a decimal, 0.167, or as approximate percent, 16.7%. This is kind of in the unlikely category. And of course, your 50-50 chance of having something take place is an even chance, one-half, 0.5, written as a decimal, or 50% as a percent. If these five gumballs were contained in a bag and we shook up the bag and we reached in to pull out a gumball, the chance of pulling a blue one would be four in five, or four out of five, or written as a decimal, 0.8, or 80%. And of course, if something is absolutely certain to happen, its probability of happening is 100%, or as a number, simply one. Now let's look at this example. If a paper bag contains these six colored marbles and you are to pick a marble from the bag without looking, then the probability that you will pick a red marble, P of R, is three out of six or one half or 50%. The probability that you will pick a blue marble, P of B, is two out of six or one third or 33.3%. For the probability of picking white, your answer is 1 out of 6, or 1 sixth, or 16.7%. Notice that if I take the individual probabilities and add them together, I will get the answer 1. Or if I take the percents of the probabilities and add them together, I will get 100%. Note that if you find the sum of all three events' probabilities, you obtain 1 or 100%. This fact must always be true in any probability experiment. The probability of an event E happening is 1 minus the probability that E won't happen. Suppose the probability of rain today is 0.38 or 38% then the probability it won't rain today is 1 minus 0.38, or 0.62, or in percents, 100% minus 38% gives us a 62% chance that it will not rain today. If the probability of not spinning a green sector on this spinner in eight spins is very close to 10%, then the probability of spinning at least one green outcome in eight spins is what percent? Well, applying what we just talked about above, the answer would be this. We would simply take 100% and subtract from it 10% to get 90%. In other words, there's a 90% chance when we spin this spinner eight times that we will get at least one green sector. It could be more than one green one, maybe four, maybe three, but we would at least have to get one. This is a key idea we need to understand in order to be able to deal with the topic of coincidences.